Let's do it live. Do it live. Hello, people. Welcome, welcome to snack time with Audrey and Mike. I'm hungry. That's I'm Audrey. I'm so glad. I'm Mike. I still need a haircut, by the way. We haven't yeah. done. It's entirely too. I long. have days. 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 Days before DC. People will see us. Oh, These people. are fake people. Like they're we not don't fake. see them. You they're know, not so. fake. They just give us. Uh, they'll cut yeah. us. A, they'll cut us a break because. Um, yeah. We're gonna eat delicious snacks in front of them. Yeah. So. Uh, we have our Universal Yums box, which got a little bit smushed this this time, but you know, what are you going to do? It's not too bad. I'm sure the snacks are fine. They're probably fine. All right, you want to read this time or you want me to read this time? I mean, it's not going to go well, but I don't care. All right. We got Corfu, Florina, Veria, Athens, Crete, and Samos are the different places. The sticker says, I discovered the Golden Fleece Feast in Greece. I don't... So, I know the Sea of Crete, but I've never heard of the Ionian Sea. Oh. Yeah. Well. Okay. So, we have seven things this month. So many things. There's a yep. nose. There's a nose. He decided to show up. Okay. So, we have a very nice man with a woman on the back. On a Vespa? Uh-huh. So that's, you know... I don't know. I don't really think of Greece. I think of more Italy as, like, somebody riding on a Vespa. What do you think? Oh. I mean, I think pretty even. Like. Oh, really? Yeah, old cities, cramped streets. You know, don't probably want to I, I try to put, like, Italy a F-150 down like the down most it. cramped of streets. But I guess Greece would, too. Here's okay. a cat. That is a nosy cat. He's looking a little scraggly there. <laughs> you look a little scraggly, bud. No, he's really looking scraggly. What are you looking scraggly for? Hmm? Oh, yes, and it is a fun sticker. That is true. Oh. Did you show the sticker? I did. Oh. I even read the sticker. Oh. Well, I, I said, was... here's what the sticker says. Feasting grease, that's fun. This month's recipe is shrimp saganaki, a seaside specialty. Oh. It's got some oils, onion... Tomato, red pepper, Sheldon deveined large shrimp, mm. prawns, depending on where you are, pitti calamata olives, dill, and feta cheese. Well. Yeah. This right. seems pretty... I like that a lot of the recipes they have in here aren't 50 ingredients that yeah. nobody's ever going to have, you know? Yeah. So that's always nice. Mm. What? And there's one thing in here I'm not going to care for, by the way. Well, that's a good thing. People want to see us, you know. You want to see me not dumb. like a thing? Yeah. Yeah, well. There's a, their drink is a Vicinatha? Vicinatha. Sounds intense. Or, how do you say that? Oh, I don't know. I think by, that sounds okay. fine. <laughs> or Cherry Cordial, which has six ounces of fresh sour cherries, a cup of sugar, uh, water, drops of lemon juice, and cold water. That doesn't sound good at all. <laughs> I think it does. You know, it sort of reminds me of like a Shirley Temple, but without the 7-Up. And with sour cherries instead of... Well, there's sour... There's cherry flavoring in those. And they have the cherry These on top. grenadine. Yeah, which is like sweet. Sure, and, and that's, that's the sugar. So, I mean, yeah. it's evening. It's... Yeah. yeah. I guess. Opa, indeed. Opa! Google Translate. Oh, Google Translate. Duh, you can have it say that word. I every time forget about it. Uh, Greek. Hi, Russell. How do you spell it? V. V Y S S I N A T H A. Visinatha. 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 I mean, I say it a lot faster. So but it's it says it at varying speeds if you keep clicking it. Visinatha. 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 Yeah, well there you go. Nailed it. Nailed it. We're Greek, it turns out. Alright, let's uh you wanna have okay. a snack? Let's have a snack. Alright. Ooh. Savory first? Uh sure. Okay. Uh well yeah. Sure. Ooh. We can always go back to it. Trying to see. So there's two things that I see. We got 
chips and bread chips. Let's do this one because it's on top. Okay. Roasted garlic bread chips. Finally, garlic bread you can snack on. Finally. I think you can always just eat garlic bread. <laughs> Finally. Or burn yourself while trying to get garlic bread like me uh -huh. right here. That's it. See, you know, if you had some garlic bread you could snack on, you wouldn't have had to do that. Okay. Right on. Uh, you probably know that garlic is good for your body, but did you know that it's good for your soul, too? Let us explain. In Greece, there's a widespread belief that bad luck can be caused simply by receiving a malicious glare. Locals aptly call this phenomenon evil eye or mati. How do they protect themselves? With a special evil eye neutralizing amulet or garlic. Folks keep uh, garlic cloves in their pockets or handbags and hang them above entryways in their homes and businesses. We prefer a slightly tastier tactic, munching on these extra crunchy bread chips coated in pungent garlic seasoning. There you are. Yep. But that's a Turkish one, though. Very different than the Greek one. We'll see. See if it works. Garlic powder, yeast, natural flavors, parentheses, peanuts. The natural flavoring is peanuts, it says. Yeah. I mean, flour. peanuts are natural as far as Salt, I know. Salt, sugar, that. That all makes sense. All right, let's get in this okay. Uh, okay. In this thing. Yeah, I'm excited. Same Z's. I love a good uh, a bread chip, a bagel chip. Yeah. Whatever kind. I'm going to have to eat all these because I mangled the whole... The top is weird. And whatever, man. Just You're just mangling even more. I know. I don't want them to sniff. There's two of them here. Okay, I get two. Two bagels stuck together is one bagel. Little bagel chips. They're wee. I'm trying to come up with a good, like, flavor pun, but I don't have anything. This is perfectly good. Yeah. It's, it's a softer crunch than I expected. Which the, I really like. Some of the ones here, we bite into it, it just jabs you right in the tooth. Or, or it feels gum. like it's going to shatter all your teeth before you can make the yeah, thing break. Yeah, this is break. a softer crumb. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very yeah, good. Yeah, I was expecting like larger ones that are broken. Mm. Like most of them are here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like this whole bag. That's um. Yep. That's a given. Very interesting meals when he visited, Russell says. Hmm. Mm. We'll eat every one. The most Greek heritage that I've experienced is in, weirdly enough, Tarpon Springs, Florida, which is a very large Greek community that, I mean, all the shops... They're also really known for their sea sponges that they go and oh, yeah. collect. And so, yeah, I go eat a lot of stuff, shop little figurines, and buy some sponges. Mm -hmm. That's 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 my story. That's what we used when I was a kid was um, like well, sea sponges. Mm -hmm. or, the real ones, not the... Yeah. I mean, probably. Yeah. I think my mom got them in Florida or something back mm -hmm. in the day. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not too garlicky. Yeah. No. That one next. Mm. Carol wants us to uh, do uh, appropriate snacks per ink and pen. We do pen and ink reviews now. I don't think I can commit to that, but it's all going to be the same snack. It'll be like whatever Mike's eating at the moment. <laughs> Bam. That's some good snacks. Heck yeah. Paprika and tomato, or tomato potato chips. Sorry, that ooh, really threw potato, me off. Tomato potato. Tomato potato. Garden fresh tomato meets smoky paprika. You have one person to thank for these chips. Ioannis <laughs> Cappadocius. <Steve>. Cappadistrius. <laughs> Where's that at? Yep, sounds right. Cappadistrius. Greek's first prime minister. Convinced that the potato was the key to boosting the economy, he started giving them away for free in 1829. When the public didn't see the appeal, he hatched a new plan. He had armed guards protect the next potato shipment as it arrived in Nap... 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 Where? 
Nafplion, I believe. Yeah, that sounds fine. Locals, believing the potatoes were to be valuable, started stealing them. And before long, the potatoes spread countrywide. Ingenious, right? Almost as ingenious as, say, pairing potato chips with tomato and smoky Greek paprika. Tomato powder, dextrose, paprika. Nafion. 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 A lot of places use palm oil. It was a thing that I find interesting. Uh, uh, Carol mentioned my soon-to-be-arrived uh, uh, Esther book pens. Mm -hmm. They actually got here yesterday morning. Yep. Alongside this very colorful pen. It's a very colorful Saturday for me. It really is. I'll have an unboxing and stuff for those up tomorrow. Um, all right, you ready to get in these? I am. Uh, I was a little let down when it said tomato, because like, we've had a lot of tomato-flavored mm -hmm. chips. And I'm just not the biggest fan. Like They're fine. Yeah. But they're often very vinegary and... Just Apparently, not. I never growing up ate salt and vinegar chips. Oh, I don't like them at all. No. I don't know why, because I like vinegar, but it was just never a chip. We always got other chips growing up. I don't think we had oil and vinegar chips like, available when I was growing up. Oh, really? That wasn't a thing in Texas. I'd never heard of putting, like... I can smell the smoke here. When I got up north and people were like, oh, you got to put vinegar on your french fries. I'm like, stop. Why, why would you ruin a french fry that way? That's like a Belgian... Thing or whatever. I, think. I don't know. It's some kind of some kind of weird yeah. Yankee thing, as far as that's I can a tell. Big chip. Yeah, it is. I got the big chip. Ooh, that's very smoky. That's a strong flavor. I was not expecting that strong of a flavor. Usually, a little mm. subtle for lots of things. I like it. It's pretty good. It's not. Uh, it doesn't have the vinegar hit that you get with a lot of tomato stuff. Mm -mm. It's smoky, but not in like the chipotle sort of smoky way. No, it's, it's more of a smoked papri paprika sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, which I'm into. It's not spicy like you would think no, maybe a paprika spicy. would be. Yeah, it's not. It's got a big picture of a, a pepper here, but mm -mm. it's um. Yeah. It's smoky, but not in like a fake like liquid mm -mm. smoke way. You know. No. No, it's just really good. Yeah. I'm into this. These are great chips. It's just, it's much stronger than a lot of the chips that we've had. There's a good, there's a good dark one. Yeah. But otherwise, these are basically ruffles. I think they're less greasy than a ruffles. They don't, I mean. No. Maybe, I don't know. Could be. I could see Let's that, Becky. It's, you might not like the first one. Ow. But it definitely does grow. It was, mm -hmm. a, it was not what I was expecting, so I, yeah. What would your short review be? Very smoky. Pleasant. Oh, see, this one wasn't... I can taste the potato in this one. Pleasant. Smoky, mm -hmm. savory, pleasant. On the whole, I prefer the bread chips. Yeah, yeah you can't argue with these... Uh, yeah. With these delicious mm -hmm. bread chips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ruffles are surprisingly greasy. Yeah, they totally yeah, are. Yeah, they are. I don't like a greasy chip. It's not my jam. Yeah, whatever you want to do for the rest of them, they're more of a the sweeter side of things. Mm -hmm. Was that the one you were not excited about? No, oh. it's this one. Oh, that's gonna be good. I don't like I don't like baklava. What? I don't like it. Uh, so let's do this one next. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, it's like a sticky, wet pastry with like nuts in it and stuff. So I'm just not. This is an almond one. I prefer a pistachio one, but that's fine. This is traditional Almond Greek baklava pastry. Greeks' nutty take on the flaky classic. When exploring Greece, there are a few things you must do. See the Parthenon, soak up the sun on a white white sand beach, and try baklava. Sorry, we don't make the rules. We just happily abide by them. So why is baklava a must? Well, you'd be hard-pressed to find a single Greek celebration, be it a wedding, holiday dinner, or birthday party, without a platter of the syrupy, centuries-old sweet front and center. And it never gets boring, as there are tons of different varieties to choose from. Uh, there's the itty-bitty size variety, the kind made with stringy, shredded phyllo dough, and even one that is rolled up like a mini burrito. Those all have names, and I just skipped right over them. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. There's, like... Uh-huh. Katafi. Katafi. 
That's one. Catify or something, who knows. Um, but to kick our Greek adventure into high gear, we brought to you the one and only original, flaky as ever, and filled with honeyed almonds. My fingers are already sticky. I already hate this Be thing. Be sure to <laughs> savor it. Like seeing the Parthenon or sitting on a spectacular Greek beach, you'll never forget your first time tasting Greek baklava. The whole inside of this, this is, bag is just wow. wet. Wow. It's a bag because it's so wet. It's just, it's so wet and ugh, i am not looking forward to this i don't even like fresh baklava like yeah i'm not a do you want me to get a fork yes okay. we're gonna need a fork at least maybe some paper towels That's great. I gave it back. Mm. so yeah we go to a bunch of um like the places we play board games at a lot of times we'll have baklava like there's an Italian place. There's a there's a, a like a Mediterranean place that we go to a lot. I'm just not a I'm not a big fan. We got a new color release in purple from a fountain pen vendor on eight six. Can't say any more than that. I found it by accident. I was asked not to say from which pen maker. Hmm. Purple, huh? Well, that's for Becky. Yay. Thanks. What's purple? Uh, Russell says that, you know, that there will be a new color release in purple from a fountain pen vendor on 8.6. Can't say any more than that. They fell out by accident. They were asked not to say which vendor. 8.6, huh? It's, uh, it's a DC show, it seems. Oh. oh I don't, I I don't can't know if this is food. Get through. Oh. It it's, the whole bottom, it looks like it's not layered. It's just like the whole bottom is just a bunch of almond slices and honey with just a little bit of phyllo on top. It's phyllo on bottom, is too. There it's just not bonded in any way. Yeah. Oh. I can't even cut it. It's not... There, have some. I don't know what I touched on sticky. <laughs> Anything. Everything is... Oh, now the booklet's sticky. No, it's not. Our world is sticky. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Is it a pen or an ink, Russell? Do you want the top? No. No, this is not good. I wouldn't say it's bad, but like a fresh one is better for sure. Oh, it's the bottoms are very wet. Yeah. A pen. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Jeremy. There's a napkin right there. I know, but my hands are so sticky. I can't Go to the even. bathroom. I'm going to have to. I'll be back. <laughs> Don't put that back down on the desk. <laughs> Throw it on a paper towel or something. Throw it on the floor. That what scraggles deal with it. <laughs> yeah, the pastry is not... I like baklava, but this... I think it's better just to have it fresh. So. And so much honey and goo. It's mostly goo. Okay. Yeah, it's just soggy. It's dense. Yeah. It's just like you want to. Would you like a mouthful of wet no nuts and dense dough? Like it's not. It's not. Uh, um, I'm gonna write. Uh, gross. Yuck. Sticky and gross. Well, should we keep going? Yes. Oh, Scraggles wants a little bite. Give her, give her some. Yeah. Eat it. Today. <laughs> Thank you. It's like, ew, it's sticky. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Oh. So what happened is I'm putting my hand down for her to eat it. And then she, like, looked down and then looked up and put her ear in my sticky hand. <laughs> I have to go wash my hands now. I'm telling you. <laughs> Scraggs, do you want the rest of this? She likes it. She's like, give me the sticky goo. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Yeah. You can hear this except now it's stuck to the napkin and bleh. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Onward and upward. Oh, yeah. Carol got that woodshed with the uh, Brooks melted crayon resin. Oh. It was real pretty. You know, I like that melted crayon thing. Yeah, you do. Yep. All right. I think this will be way better. Yeah, a napkin doesn't really help with these. It, no, because it sticks to the napkin yeah. and everything You're shreds. You're like, oh, I need to have one of those. No, it didn't. You can't wipe it off. You need, you need a wet wipe. You need wet wipes, yeah. Like at KFC back in the day. I don't know if they still do. <laughs> do they still give you those? What is this thing? This is a grape oh. must soft cookie. Grape must soft cookie. Grape must... Mustacorulora cookie. Mustacorulora. How would you say that? Where? That that word. Wow. Um, let's make the Google say it. Spell it slow. M O U, S T O, K O U, L O U, R A. Mustache cookies <laughs> is what it translates to, apparently. Mustache cookies. Mustacolura. 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 Mustache cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Mustache cookies. <laughs> Greek pressed grapes in a soft ring cookie. Folks, uh, folks don't often use the word musty to describe good things, usually basements or socks. But we found the exception. These soft cinnamon cookie, cinnamony cookies are meant to be musty. They're made with literal grape must, a thick mixture made up of the freshly, freshly pressed juice, skins, seeds, and stems of the grape, usually prepared as the first step of winemaking. Fortunately, the must made in the northern Greek city of Kilkis doesn't get turned into wine. It's used to make this traditional mustocoloro cookie a must, absolute must for any visit to Greece. Hmm. So it reminds me of like, oh, it's the I Love Lucy where she's pressing the grapes and you get the, yeah. And just cramming the grapes in her mouth? Yeah. Oh, that was chocolate. No, it was it chocolate didn't. factory. Yeah. Mustocoloro. Colora. Most of Colora. I mean, it looks oh, fun. wow. That is fun. It's a thick cookie, y'all. It is. Bam. It's like <laughs> that's a, a donut. That's a smallish... That's actually just a slightly small donut. Like an old-fashioned donut. Yeah. I'm going to smell this thing. Oh, yeah. It doesn't smell grapey. It smells very cinnamony. It smells like cinnamon. Oh, uh, actually... Maybe at the end. Here, sniff the hole. Just do it. Let's take another breath and like, do you smell a little bit of wine at the end? I get a little bit of a wine okay. hit like Maybe in the back of my nose. Maybe a little bit, but it's always the cinnamon first. Cake donut, that's the thing. Yeah. Spices, leavenings, things. Yeah. A lot of grape stuff. <laughs> Ruth says uh, we should install a small sink in our office if you're good for us snacks and pin washing. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, by the way, I got your I got your letter yesterday, Ruth. Yeah. Here you go. A little. It cross smells like a a Christmas cookie thing. Yeah. All right. Oh. Scraggles thinks that she's right right here. Oh, look at her. Are you hopeful? Do you want this? Give her she, some. Well, I want to try it first. Can't I try it? Yes. Dink. Oh, crumbly. 
It's much crumblier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. The end, I expect there to be more of a sweet, hmm. but it's not. Yeah. It's not actually sweet at all. No. No. It's just cinnamon. You think the cinnamon always goes with sugar here, so you're like, oh, it's going to be sweet, but mm. it's just cinnamon. Yeah, these aren't, um, this isn't bad. Mm -mm. Somebody's mentioned, uh, yeah, Carol says, uh, you need Greek pudding coffee with your snackies. I think some coffee would actually be really good with this. That might be, yeah. And I just finished my pot of coffee, like, just before we started the stream, which is too bad, because... Yeah. Um, yeah, this isn't bad at all. No. It's just not, like, I wouldn't necessarily... Did you like it? Scraggles liked it. I bet. It's kind of like a crumbly bread, really. Like, it's crumblier. Yeah. If it was a little bit moister, I think yeah. that would be a, not as moist as that baklava. But no. A little bit moister, maybe a little bit more sugary. It's like a cinnamony bread, but not like a sugary like cinnamon Like a dry bread. spice cake, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's dry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not quite, like, mouthful of cinnamon dry, but... No. Mm -mm. The saliva helps bind it, it together. It's barely. Yeah, it's... Exactly, as Becky put it. It is moist for a cookie, but for a cake, it's dry. It's an in-between. Hmm. Yeah. I don't yeah, really it's weird. taste grape. No, there's none. I... I it's don't... just spice. Yeah. Yeah, no grapes. <laughs> Uh, where is this thing? Uh, gotta be this. Dry. No grapes. Yeah. I mean, I think it's an interesting thing. I'm glad they have things like this. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think it's, um, I think it's fine, but I'm not gonna be running out to get a recipe for it, you know? Same Z's. Yeah. Doesn't go super well with Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah, that's what I went with, too, and yeah. it's... Mm. Some fruitiness, but really indistinct. It... I don't know. I'm not really getting it. No, I don't really get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have one, two. Oh, there's another thing. Underneath Three the... things left. There's the bag and this thing. Which do you want to do? The bag or the other thing? The finger. Okay. Which I say because it says finger. You know, it's not a real European yum without a wafer snack. Have this to have a wafer, our, yeah. This is a wafer snack. Drizzled milk chocolate wafer. Grease's version of a better Kit Kat. Wow. They put in parentheses. I put in like that, but it's actually parentheses. Obsessed with wafers? Get excited. <laughs> Grief? <laughs> I know, right? Yes, I love, I love wafers. Get excited. Grease is where the wafers were invented. Back in uh, 146 B.C., Athenians cooked them by pouring batter between two hot plates, like an ancient waffle iron, and topped the finished wafers with herbs and cheese. <laughs> to see how far Greek wafers have come since then, just take a bite of this yum. With four crispy wafers slathered in cocoa cream and then coated in rich chocolate, then then drizzled with even more chocolate, you're basically tasting 2,000 years of innovation, and boy, is it good. There it is. I like the extra little drizzle on top. Yep. Okay. Do the uh, the food show reveal. Ooh. Yeah, it's a good looking, yeah. good looking layers. Nice layers. Yeah. So, my problem with Kit Kats is that... The chocolate sucks. The chocolate is way too yeah. sweet and it melts instantly. It's yeah. so sweet. This is a little sweet, not too much. The wafer is a little thin. I would like a, a, crunch, a bigger crunch for it, mm -hmm. but it's still really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You have the last bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Finish the finishing this like a raw. Mm-hmm. Why wait? Good. 
Good. Um, how do I like the, the kiwi ink? I think it looks pretty good. I got a little bit of, I got a little bit of water on it. Oh my side. goodness. It looks like that. Mm. Nice looking. It's fun. Yeah. Oh wait, that's not it. Oh. This is it. This is the tri -Kalori. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Is that blue shimmer in there? Looks like it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it looks good. I dig it. Mm -hmm. I can dig it. Can you'll dig it? I can dig it. All right. Last things are in the bag. The bag. We got a jelly candy and a toffee. Hmm. Uh, I do like a jelly Euro candy. Europeans love that toffee too. Mm -hmm. You gotta have wafer and you gotta have toffee. There we go. Okay, which one would you like to start with? Um, let's start with this one. Okay, that is pomegranate jelly candy, tart and sweet and exceptionally chewy. Pomegranate. We have a Greek in the house. <gasps> oh, tell us about this pomegranate <laughs> jelly candy. Pomegranate is dangerous, at least in Greek mythology. As the story goes, Hades, the god of the dead, trapped Persephone, goddess of vegetation, and the underworld, leaving Greece with no crops. Hades eventually agreed to release her, but first he fed her some pomegranate. Nice, right? Nope. Food was forbidden in the underworld, so eating the pomegranate uh, meant Persephone had to stay there for a portion of every year. That's how the Greeks explained the seasons. Fortunately for you, modern Greeks actually consider pomegranate to be good luck, as well as a must-have for weddings and New Year's Eve parties. That means you can go ahead and enjoy this juicy pomegranate jelly, no strings attached. The, so, in order to get the coloring, it's vegetable juice from black carrot. That's actually really common. Hmm? Yeah. That was interesting. Yeah. Well. You can drink it or use it with a spoon, yeah. To be honest, I haven't seen a pomegranate jelly before. Yeah, fair enough. Well, Here you go. You, I eat the whole thing? Sure. You have two. It's very fragrant. Very, very sugary on the outside. Oh, it does smell great. There you go. You did better. Good job. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? Hmm. Reminds me of Chuckles. Or those other things. What are those other candies? I've had something it is just like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like your teeth weirdly go through it. It's I it's a very weird sensation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very juicy, great flavor. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah. There's a little dog down here wishing that I would give her more foods. Yep, that was really good. Since you're in Greece, definitely get some of those. I, we like them. Mm -hmm. But I think I don't need another one. Like, they're very sugary. So just having one is enough, you know? <laughs> Would eat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, toffee. Last one. Yeah, oh, it's not at all like uh, now, now and later now. The rich, soft, and creamy treat from Athens. There's a reason why the ancient Romans called almonds nut greca, or Greek nuts. If Greeks aren't plucking almonds straight from the tree as a snack, they're savoring them at any other meal of the day. Maybe it's during breakfast of donut balls topped with ground almonds, lucumades, lucumades? an afternoon appetizer of scordalia? creamy almond and garlic dip, or even sweet dessert of baklava, like the one in the box. Even candies get the almond treatment. So, if you feel to... So, feel free to eat these chewy yums any time of day. Really, you'd be immersing yourself deeper in the local culture. Let's eat them around 4.30ish. Okay, perfect. Okay, there you go. That's yours. Oh, this is an interesting color. Yep. I think they just didn't color it, which is fine. Yeah, I'm always used to the sort of caramel kind of coloring. That's really good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Very creamy. Yeah. Super creamy. Mm hmm I think I got a little piece of almond, actually. Really? Mmm. I didn't get that. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I just, um, 
um, imagining it. That's really good, yeah. I don't think there's any almond in this. Hmm. Could have just been a thumbnail. I don't know. <laughs> so I just left don't some, say that. Left Jeez. Uh, no, it's very good. Yeah, no, I would I would eat a fistful of these. Do you have those postus that fit perfectly? Um, what do they look like? They're like that. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, trivia time. Okay. Let me, uh, let's do this. What did the world's first vending machine dispense? A, holy water. B, mini philosophy books. C, silverware. <laughs> or D, Pepsi. World's first vending machine? Probably uh, miniature philosophy books. You think? Yeah, uh, I mean, why wouldn't it? It was in Greece, so, um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with... You're not going with that? No. Holy Water's a pretty good... Uh, yeah. Holy Water's I pretty was... good. Well, as a Greek, I feel like he would know. Hmm. Holy Water? I mean, silverware is, like, oddly specific and weird. Yeah. I was considering that just because it's weird. I mean, I kind of think it's probably holy water because that seems guess. easy, but I'm going to go with silverware. See. I was going to, let's go with that too. Silverware. You're going with silverware? Yeah. Oh, snap. I thought you were going with holy water. No, I think that's. You don't want to actually likely. be right. You want to go. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know. Zoom a little bit. Let me get there. There we go. All right. So we got some holy waters. An A and a Pepsi. And <laughs> I'm going silverware. The answer uh -huh. is yeah. A holy water. A holy water. Back in the first century AD, engineer Heron of Alexandria uh, created the world's first vending machine. Wow. For a divine purpose, disp dispensing holy water for temple goers. A coin inserted into the top would drop into the bar inside the vase, allowing holy water to flow. For locals at the time, these vending machines were a miracle. And for priests looking for an easy way to collect donations, they were a godsend. Ha <laughs> ha. See what they did there. Pepsi is holy to some people, yeah. Number two. Ancient Greeks used blank as badges. A. Yeah, reread that. Bandages. There you go. <laughs> a. Mastic gum, which we had mastic candy before. Mm -hmm. B. Snail slime. Okay. C. Papyrus, <laughs> or D, spider webs. Hmm. I am going with B, snail slime. Wow. Mucin? Yep. Snail mucin. <laughs> Yuck on all of them. Hmm. <laughs> between A and B, huh? Between mastic gum and snail slime? I'm going with spider webs, D. Becky's, a... Becky's also going spider webs. Wow. Yep. Going spider webs. Okay. Spider's so like, what about me? I'm so cute. Look at me. Like, well, what if I had a piece of bread? We had bad storms this morning and she was not happy. No. Well, the answer is. Spider webs. Show me spider webs. The answer is spider webs. Yes. Next time you see a spider web, don't throw it away. Gather it up. Doctors in ancient Greece treated wounds with balled up spider webs, believing they had a natural antifungal and antiseptic properties. Modern science has revealed that this wasn't a crazy idea. Spider webs are rich in vitamin K, which helps promote clotting. So next time you see a spider, don't say eek. Say thank you. It's the least you can do. Thank you. I'm going to take your home, ball it up, and stick it in my wounds. Yeah. <laughs> I was a Boy Scout. Okay. That was a that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Spider webs. I yeah. mean, snail slime is good for things too. It has lots of. How do you use a snail slime bandage though? I mean, you can put the snail slime on there and then put a cloth on it. The cloth would be the bandage. 
I mean, <sighs> I think you guys get like stay. sheets of dried snail slime and like. Fair, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when touring ancient historical sites, it's illegal to a fly a drone. B, wear high heels. C, use selfie sticks. Or D, laugh out loud. Lol. Hmm. I. I'm going to be wild card. I'm saying E, all of the above. I was thinking all of the above as well. Yeah. The laugh out loud thing is really weird. Like, why can't you laugh? I mean, there could be some reason. High heels seems like it would just be a uh, an issue of... Uh, what's that thing where you don't want to get sued? Your breath is so strong of garlic right now. <laughs> Turn your face. I'm sorry, but it is so strong. It's like salty smelling. <laughs> I wonder why that would be. I'm just over here just housing these I jokes. know, I'm just br breathing. <laughs> and there's a fan going, so it's, just, it's back here, so it's blowing your... Liability, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm going with I'm going for D. I think it's all of the above. I'm going for all of the above just because <laughs> having gone to, you know, temples and other places in Cambodia, are they're very specific about mm -hmm. things you can and cannot do. Yeah, I don't know. The answer to number three is ooh, there's an answer. Oh, it is B. Wear high heels. Huh. You can't wear high heels at ancient Greek historical sites like the Acropolis because you could potentially wound the monuments. Huh. Sharp, sole, sharp sole shoes were added um, to the wear and tear of national treasures, so authorities banned them in 2009. Many of these historic sites are made of notoriously slippery marble or stone, so sneakers will also help prevent any embarrassing slips. You don't want to damage the Parthenon or your pride. Yeah, so uh, like you said, also if there's a floor that's mosaic, you don't want heels on it. Yeah. And our Greek viewer, it says B, because that high heels damage the marble on the floor. Yep. Same reason like hiking sticks are banned in a lot of national parks and yeah. stuff. They have those little tungsten tips on, on them. The end, yeah. And it's just wearing through the rocks because it's real hard. Yeah. Yeah. Number four. Which of the following is said to ward off evil in Greece? A, Greek salad. <laughs> B, crows. <laughs> C, salt, or D, the color orange? I'm going salt. That seems obvious to me. I mean, it's apparently not uh, not garlic. <laughs> so I'm mm -hmm. going salt. Hmm. Like the superstition where you throw a little salt over your shoulder, maybe? Yeah, but that's why I think that's... Yeah. If you're trying to keep ghosts in, you put salt around them. I learned from the Haunted Collector. Salad of it has garlic, yep. I am going with the color orange. It's pretty good. Mm hmm. All right. The answer to number four. Number four. Is sea salt. Sea salt. Science has proven that salt has many health benefits. According to Greek folk folklore, it can also be sprinkled in new homes to chase away any evil energies or get rid of any unwanted guest. Mm -hmm. So next time you want someone to leave your house, sprinkle a little bit of salt behind them. Just be sure to be covert. If you they see you, they might be a little salty. <laughs> or just chuck a handful of salt at them and just pelt them with salt. Get out of my house. <laughs> A Greek vase from 440 BC shows the earliest depiction of A. A yo-yo B. A whale C. A man swimming D. A burrito Alright, no way is it the first of a man swimming. Um, but what about a burrito? I don't... I mean, I feel like it would be a euro or something, right? Uh, I'm gonna go with a yo-yo. That's so crumbly. <laughs> yeah. oh, I made such a mistake. Because <laughs> you're a McBean connection, you're related to most of the royalty of Europe. Nice, Russell. I am of uh, Clan McKay, so uh, our people got overthrown and we lost our castle, but everything's cool. It's mm -hmm. cool. Got a sick tartan, though. Sick tartan. 
That's it. What are you going to go with? A whale. Whales are pretty solid. I mean, there's a lot of whales around Greece. I want to go with burrito, but I'll whale. go with a whale. <laughs> Becky's going burrito. She put it in print. It's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want me to go? burritos are do awesome. I answer them? Uh, you can go ahead. Okay. You've been doing a good job. Number five. The answer is... A yo-yo. Yes. Yes, the toy. The very first yo-yo depiction featuring a boy playing with a timeless toy was found on a vase from the 5th century BC. Made of wood, metal, or clay, the ancient Greek yo-yo may have served as more than just entertainment. Some believed it was used as an offering to the gods or as a coming-of-age ritual for boys. Nothing says adulthood like sick yo-yo tricks. You gotta walk the dog, mm-hmm. do a little cat's cradle. Cat's cradle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or rock the cradle? That sounds more like it. Yeah. Cat's cradle is that thing with the string. Yeah. Um, McKay would make an intriguing dark ink. It's M A C K A Y, not Mick K. It's the other one. Um, number six. How did ancient Greeks propose marriage? A. Jumping over hot coals. B. Reciting a line from Homer's epics. C, waving an olive branch, or D, throwing an apple. If I'd known that, I would have just whipped an apple at you back in the day. Saved a lot of money. Oh, so much money. <laughs> um, I mean, our Greek uh, guest here says waving an olive branch, which is interesting. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to go with, I mean, I'm assuming. With, I'm assuming they know. They would know. <laughs> yeah. That's right. not one of those weird questions about the vending machine. Look, I'm going to, I mean, well, they got that one right too, obviously. Uh, yeah, I mean, C seems like it, it makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go with throwing an apple because I hope it's true. <gasps> Apple's tying about the whole Paris thing, but that didn't end well. It, no. Um, yeah, I'm going to, yeah, C is, C is a good answer. I'm going with D though. You go. <laughs> you know me. A lot of times when trivia doesn't matter and there's not money yep. on the line, I'll go for the funny answer. Yeah. The answer is D. Throwing an apple. What? Yes. Hot dog. <laughs> How do you like them apples? To propose a Greek man would throw an apple at his sweetheart. And if she caught it, it meant she accepted. <laughs> Believe it or not, the custom's origins date back to a myth in which Eris, the goddess of discord, throws an apple and starts a fight at a wedding, which eventually escalates into the Trojan War. And yet somehow, the apple became a symbol of female beauty and love. Well, Becky, you know, there you go. Paris. Yep. Huh. Yep. Well, throwing an apple... Number seven. What did the Oracle of Delphi do to make prophecies? A. Play a song with Apollo's lyre. B. I think you mean Lyrae. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) Play a song with Apollo's Lyrae. Thank you. Eat 15 pomegranate seeds. uh, Breathe fumes from the ground. Or put uh, put on ointment made from bees. What are you going with? It's the fumes. Oh, is it? Yeah. I am pretty sure it's breathing fumes from the ground. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of uh, poisonous gases that would come up through this mm-hmm. crack. Uh, Make and you see things? <laughs> really, yeah. Oracles of Delphi were just uh, just tripping. Huh. Yep. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I'm going with. Yeah. Number seven. Answer is breathe fumes. C. The Oracle of Delphi, known for her future-seeing insights, was sought after by peasants and rulers alike for her supernatural abilities. So how did she make her prophecies? One theory is that the Oracle sat above a schism in the earth and breathed in any escaping fumes, which helped produce visions. Sounds wild, but it might be true. 21st century geologists found two faults below the temple, plus evidence of hallucinogenic gases rising from a nearby spring. <laughs> Yep. Get high, speak truths. That's uh, that's the the Delphi motto. Yeah. 
Yep. It's good stuff. Um, also, they <laughs> like, went blind or something, I think, too. Well, which I mean, is that, yeah. Also goes to just breathing a bunch of fumes. Yep. Uh, let's see. It's Greek law that all citizens... All right, our, our Greek guest here is uh, uh, going to have uh, something here. It's Greek law that all citizens, A, eat olive oil every day, B, vote in elections, C, go to church, or D, learn to drive mopeds. Huh. All of the above. No way to the decree you have to eat olive oil every day. Really? I don't know. I they probably got that answer. legit olive oil and not that like well, yeah. canola in a bottle that's uh, it's not you get the Bertoli here. stuff. I almost said a bad word. It's not that Bertoli like the sort of the, they add probably, yellow to it. You probably know? isn't olive oil at yeah. all. Has no olives in its yeah. history. Yeah. I uh, got B vote in elections. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they have to vote in elections. But it could be other things too. They did have the moped, and I talked about the moped and how I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't really think of them as the, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, learn to drive mopeds is, is pretty, it would be a fun answer. But I'm pretty sure B is true. Also, we got all Bs dropping in the chat here. Answer is B, vote in elections. Yeah. Would you expect anything less from the birthplace of democracy? The government of modern Greece takes democracy just as seriously as its ancestors. Every citizen above the age of 17 is required to vote, uh, though enforcement is lax. <laughs> That's not the only way Greece encourages voting. Elections take place on a Sunday, and all students get a four-day weekend. We can definitely get behind that. Yeah, that would be a nice thing to do, to yeah. have the day off when you actually have to go vote. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Instead of making more laws to make it more difficult yeah. to vote, yeah. And making yeah. it times that don't work for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Bam. That's the yeah. trivia, folks. I didn't do well today. I think you did fine. Look, those Greek words are long, and they're put together in ways that English words generally aren't. So I think you did a good job. Wow. All of my uh, <laughs> all of my Greek comes from either uh, ain't reading ancient Greek stuff in philosophy, mm -hmm. or uh, playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey oh. for hundreds of hours. I feel like um, I have a good handle on things mm -hmm. from from that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm now out of bread chips. I was eating them until Audrey scolded me for my garlic breath, <laughs> my salty salty garlic breath. <laughs> so I stopped. How about playing Hades? Yeah, I mean, I do some of that, but I don't think I learned anything that helped me on this trivia from that. I think this might be a good primer for later. I have to record the Panatic podcast in a few hours. You mean so. get to? I, I just, am, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to be on the podcast with the famous Brad Dowdy. The famous. So famous. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so that'd be fun. Got to escape and meet mom. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah. Hades. I am, I can't, I can't beat the darn thing. Um, yep. I just haven't beaten it yet. Yeah. I don't know, man. Connor got that game and beat it in like two days. No, oh, really? I've had it since it was like. Well, you don't play it all day. No, you know? that's true. I mean, but also, like, I've had it since pre release. Like, I've had it for like two years. Yeah. You don't finish most games, though. That's accurate. There could be many reasons behind that. Well, this one is just not good enough. One? Oh, well. <laughs> this one just not good enough. Uh, can't wait to hear it on Wednesday. Yeah, it'll be publish publishing probably on Wednesday. That's usually how that goes. Uh, first impressions on the Esterbrook Paradise pens. Uh, first impressions is that they are real pretty. How pretty these things are. They're a, they're a real party, I tell you. What do you think, Odd? What are your first impressions? Scraggles. My goodness. I like them. How do you feel about the gold trim? Still wish it was silver? Yeah. I do. I find it's again even in person it's the orange one that i find the most it just doesn't fit as well oh you don't like the orange one i don't like the orange with the gold oh i don't mind the yellow with it it mm. just sort of it doesn't look as gold because it has yellow i i really like this you know blue I mean? yeah 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 it kind of it kind of matches. Like, it really kind of it ties together. Yeah, I, I like these two more. I like the blue with this one. It's fine. But I think that, again, these contrasting colors work better together. Yeah, this blue and yellow is real good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. 
I like them. So yeah, it's it actually went in the way that we thought we, it was going to go, yeah. even in person. Yeah. You just never know. But uh, yeah, it's pretty. Can you see it? Yeah. Let's see how it fits in my hand. Everyone was thinking it was a little small for their hand. Yeah, that's fine. It's very light. Yeah. Very light. Do you guys like my nails? Clipsy likes them. Oh, thank you. I don't often do magnetic ones, but this was too too good to pass up. Yeah. Yeah, so first impressions is I like these. I think yeah. they're cool. Yeah. And the medallion on the top is very the nice. Pictures, again, with the cap looking much more bulbous, it's not as weird in person. No, like it in a lot of pictures it does make the cap look big and weird. Which like And that's what I thought. That's what we thought when we first saw the picture, but it's Yeah, like why is that cap so fat? But in person it's actually not a big no. deal. It's totally fine. Uh, your nails are lovely. Hey Claire, didn't know you were here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, magnetic. magnetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She explained to them what that means. A lot of people don't have magnetic nail polishes. They put magnetic particles in there. So basically I put the nail polish just looks like a regular nail polish. And then I put it on and I take a literal neodymium magnet and you put it as close to the nail as possible. Don't touch the nail. You <laughs> just have to get it as close without touching the nail Yeah. in about 30 seconds and then put a top coat over it so it doesn't spread oh okay yeah so that's sort of i put a quick dry on it so it stays the line stays as crisp as it possibly can yeah so it brings that all to one place yeah so. you can get pattern ones the one that i have is just like a long stick one so that's why it has the line but mm -hmm. there's cat eye ones there this thing is like this is like galaxy-ish i mean look at that, look at that sweet sweet purple swash through there and it's sort of orange and so this lighting Oh, I do see some see orange. The, yeah. yeah, you can't see all the different colors just because it's the lights on it, but there it is. Well, it looks green there. Well, right, right here, you see that orange band. It's there. Yeah, it's cool. So, go yeah. with an ink for your nails. We've done that several times. Uh, it's called uh, nibs and nails. Yep. Yeah, we've done that, and it's been a while, but it's yeah. It's been a long time. I know. Who bad. thought of that? I don't know. They started making those a long time ago. But we, some of them, are, a lot of them, are just kind of boring, though, right? They can like, be. So this one's just special because. There's different colors of the magnetic. Hmm. So usually it's just one color and you put, and it just shows the base color and then whatever the particles of the magnetized parts are. Hmm. But this one has like three, four different colors in it that make it look more interesting. Yeah. Yeah, this is the other pen I got yesterday. And I was like, no, Duragraph. Mm. But this pen actually looks just wild. I wonder if it, how it's made, or if it's gonna like peel. It's anodized, it's, so it should it be so just, it should be yeah. just fine. Yeah, I mean, it's anodized, so you should, you could scrape it off, I suppose. Hmm. But usually, it's pretty, pretty tough. But yeah, this is metal, and uh, just cool. Yeah, China Glaze. I think I, I still have some of those. And Sally Hansen, I have a bunch of the Sally Hansen ones. I think I put some at the table in Raleigh. Mm. I put one or two because they're just like the regular colors. And I have a few a special special ones that I keep. So, mm -hmm. Well, folks, thanks very much for, uh, oh, yeah. China Glaze is the first commercial line to put them out. They're Indies first, and who knows who that was. Yeah. Pax. Yeah. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. It's been a fun little hour. We ate some snacks. Yeah. Did you have a favorite snack? Um, I really like the toffee. Toffee was very good. I, I mean, a lot of them were good. I don't know if, I, the ones I didn't really care for mm. was the dry cake thing. Great must. And the baklava. The mustache cookies. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah, was, the baklava was a, just a, that was it, it was though. not good. Mustache cookie is fine. The pomegranate chewy thing was good. It was very good. Both chip things mm -hmm. are good. I think the chip thing I, is my favorite. I mean, we ate this. There's nothing left of this little wafer thing. Yeah, but it wasn't very, it was small. like four bites. Yeah. So it was good. Uh, Carl says, have fun on the podcast. Oh, and it's safe with travels. Brad, so and I haven't seen him in years. <laughs> right? Literal <laughs> years. And I don't know if he's yeah. going to any shows this year. So. He's not. Oh. So I'll... Maybe see mm -hmm. him in 2022. Something so yeah, like it was probably... When's the last time we saw him? Mm, Baltimore. Last Did he go to Baltimore? I'm pretty sure he was there. I don't mm. remember if he was in Baltimore. Anyway, don't know. 
All right, folks, we got to bounce. Uh, we'll see y'all later. Thanks very much. I will uh, be chatting at you on Friday. Although, those of y'all that know about how these show things go, I'm not super responsive to chat because there's a lot of stuff going yeah. around or going on around, and there's like a like a the chat disappears pretty quickly. It so does. I miss yeah, a lot of chat, but. Yeah. Uh, but do show up for that, 3.30 p.m. Friday if live. If you can't make it, you can watch it afterwards. It's one of those things that, yeah, you know. It persists. It per yeah. So, all right, folks, that's it. Say goodbye, Audrey. Oh. oh, the DC show has put out saying that everyone has to wear a mask. So, yep. if you're going, make sure to bring some. I'm mm -hmm. not sure they have some. They have some at the desk, but, yep. But. Hooray for masks. Hooray. All right, stay safe out there. Think about what you put out in the world. Make it a better place. Say goodbye, Mike. Goodbye, Mike. Absolutely.